today I've got a Cricut tutorial for you showing you how to add the embellishment of the person's name to your Christmas cracker favours. So there's already a video on our channel showing you how to make the cracker itself with the template download and everything. That video is linked in the description box below and above on the screen right now. Um, but if you just want to add that extra detailing with the person's name, perhaps if you've like personalize what's going inside the cracker for that particular guest then i'm going to show you how to do that now but both these videos work in conjunction with each other so do check out the original one as well so here's what you'll need for making your name So go ahead and make your cracker template as per our previous video which we'll link above and in the description box below. Now if you want to personalize it individually to the people coming to your gathering this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to make my first one called Madeline. To create this text box all you needed to have done is come over here to where it says text on the left hand side. You click that and simply type your chosen word into this text box. Once you've done that, you can come up here to select your font. The one I'm using today is Rossville, Roseville, I'm not sure how you say that. Um, make sure your operation is set to basic cut up here. You can change the color to whatever color vinyl you're intending to cut out of if you wish, especially useful if you're doing several names and want to use different colors that will help separate them out onto the cracked mats later on. As I'm only doing one, or I'm going to do them in the same color. I'm just going to leave mine as black for now. If you need to adjust the size, which you probably will from what it automatically drops in as, you can come up here where it says size at the top. So obviously measure out the, the length of space that you have on your cracker. Mine, if you've used my template, um, I think the ideal size to make would be about three inches wide by up to one inch height so depending on which font you're using just adjust slightly so it doesn't look funny or goofy or obviously the length of the name impacts that too so so if you need to change that you can come up here if you want to change the ratios in relation to each other so the width and height ratios you can unlock this padlock and adjust using these arrows or simply by dragging over here and lock that back up when you're done if you want to do lots of names, you can obviously just copy and paste what you've already done to maintain the features you've already made. So on a Mac, that would be Command C and Command V, like so. And then you can just simply click in there and change the name to whatever you need. The other tool you might need is if you don't like sort of some of the letter spacing on the font that you've chosen, you want to either spread things out or move things closer together. If you click on your text box to highlight the relevant one and then come up here to where it says letter spacing, you can adjust manually here how far apart or close together those letters are, as you can see, just by using those arrow buttons. Okay. Also, my font here, as you can see, is joined up. Um, some fonts won't be like that or say the letters will be further apart you've moved them together manually if you've done that you will want to then come down here to where it says combine and hit weld this will mean that it cuts out as one shape and doesn't end up making extra cuts where the joins are where they were originally separate letters and that way it just is one word it's nice and neat um, when you're happy with your design, you'll come up here to where it says make it in the top left, right hand corner. As you can see, it will then drop it on to your virtual mat. You can move things around on the screen. It's kind of a print preview, but you can move things. So it's got to be within this red border. You may want to give yourself a little extra leeway again. It automatically arranges it on the mat to try and maximize um, or minimize the amount of materials you're using. Um, but obviously, depending on what kind of scraps of vinyl you might be using, you can adjust accordingly. Now, the other important note here is that 
I'm using iron-on vinyl to transfer my lettering onto my crackers. This is because if you try to use regular transfer tape, when you stick it onto a sort of paper card surface, or when you try to pull it away, the um, transfer sheet will pull off some of the paper and make it look awful. So using iron-on is actually a really great way to go. But because we're using iron-on, that means we need to come over to this left-hand side and hit mirror to flip the image or images. That's extremely important, <laughs> okay? So then when you're happy, you'll come down here and hit continue. Make sure your machine is connected to your laptop or whatever you're using and switched on as well. Then you're gonna select your base material. As I said, I'm going to use everyday iron-on. As I say, this makes the transfer process much cleaner. I wouldn't recommend just using regular vinyl and trying to transfer it with transfer tape. So go ahead and select that material or just go to the browse on materials if it's not there. Then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got the right blade in the machine. So we're gonna load our blade into clamp B. So you just open it up, grab your blade. So it's the fine point one, so it's the one with the almost barely there point. Okay, and then we just pop it in the top here, close the clamp like so. Go ahead and grab your standard grip mat and your iron-on vinyl. You need to stick it exactly where you told the machine you were going to put it. And you're gonna stick it shiny side face down. Go ahead and load your mat into your machine, just feeding it under the little guides on either side and making sure the four stars are spaced out. Press the flashing arrow button on top, which will feed it into the machine, and then press the C Cricut logo on top once that starts flashing. That will then make your cut onto your vinyl. Then go ahead and read out the negative space. So this is all the space that you do not want to transfer onto your vinyl. Go ahead and grab your Easy Press or your Cricut Mini, whichever, whatever you're using. To heat this up, we're gonna switch it on. It will come up with whatever you had last time. To adjust the temperature, you're gonna press the temperature button, which will make it flash. You can then use the up and down arrow um, signs as you need. We're gonna to go to 140 degrees C and we want it to be 30 seconds. If this doesn't say 30 seconds, press and hold this timer and then adjust in the same way. You can see now that the Cricut logo is in an like amber colour while it's warming up. When it's ready, it will be green and it will beep audibly to let you know. Whilst that's heating up, go ahead and grab your mat and your pre-made cracker. So you want to have opened it out, have cut all the pieces out and it just be at the pre-rolling stage. Once your machine has turned green, you're ready to go. So we're gonna preheat your, your material for five seconds. Then go ahead and grab your vinyl. You want to place it in the center. So the center will be when the crack is finished, level with your design on either side. I'm then going to use a protective sheet just to protect the cracker. Replace it at your easy press and press down firmly for 30 seconds. Once the transfer is cool to the touch, go ahead and carefully peel back the carrier sheet. And so if anything hasn't stuck down properly, just simply replace the sheet and add a little bit more heat. There you go. And from here, just follow the rest of the steps from the original Cricut Cracker tutorial. <laughs>